Time signatures are in right now, and there is a gigantic list of tunes you guys have asked me to analyze with Wacky Time Six. Up to this point, I've excluded tunes which mix different time signatures together, so I figured I might as well talk about some of the cooler examples of those here. I know this video took a second to come out, but contrary to popular belief, it actually takes me forever to transcribe these weird little time sigs. Seriously, I'm sitting here like... One, two, three, four... No, I counted that one before. So what is mixed meter? This is for sure one of the shorter concept explanations, as it's just a mixture of time signatures or metric feels within a piece of music. It's actually a bit easier to say what isn't mixed meter. Tunes which stay entirely in one time signature obviously aren't mixed meter, but I would argue this even includes larger asymmetrical time signatures. Even though something in 23 could be counted and notated as alternating measures of 11 and 12, I would argue it's not true mixed meter, as the cycle is too small and apparent, especially if it stays in 23 for the entirety of the tune. The line, of course, gets a bit gray as the time signature gets larger and the cycle is longer, which I alluded to in my previous time signatures video. But essentially, true mixed meter doesn't typically have a consistent and easily countable cycle. So why do tunes even use mixed meter in the first place? I think the most frequent usage is adding ambiguity and rhythmic uncertainty into a tune. The more mixed the meter gets, the greater the uncertainty. A great level zero example is Subterranean Hell from Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Take a listen to how the time signature changes every section. starts off in the 7-4 groove and then settles into 6 and then eventually 5. It gives each time signature enough time to breathe, but then subverts your expectations in each new section by just chopping off one note, making it feel like it's almost rushing. This technique is perhaps meant to mirror the labyrinth-like hallways of Dracula's eponymous castle in which the game takes place. The mixed meter is a result of this deliberate compositional technique, and we'll take a look at something similar a bit later. But still, all of our other examples are much harder to count, and I think illustrate more interesting facets of mixed meter. So let's take a look, starting with level 1. Echo's theme from League of Legends is pretty neat. Let's take a listen to the main part of his theme going into the B section. So largely, this theme alternates between just 5-4 and 6-4. For the entirety of that main part, a compelling argument could be made that we're in this 11-4 groove. But then in that B section, our expectations are subverted and we have two contiguous measures of 6-4, instead of the expected 5-4, which then leads into another cycle of 6-5-6-6. Six, six, six. It's very similar to the Castlevania tune in the sense that it's a mixed meter which creates an expectation only to subvert it. What I love about this theme, though, is that it gets you to settle into this asymmetrical prime number groove of 11-4, and then rub pulls you with just a simple measure of 6-4. It's a fairly rare case of mixed meter that really just alternates between two different time signatures, but keeps you from mentally combining them by not alternating consistently. It's a great example of something that can't really be notated as one big time signature, because the point of the tune is the alternation itself. If you similarly hate yourself and play League of Legends, you're probably aware of the connection between this tune's meter and Echo's lore. With his epithet literally being the boy who shattered time, and having a moveset of time-bending abilities, his theme literally breaks the cycle of time signatures. 
We'll explore this interesting duality of tunes which seem to intuitively use mixed meter versus something using mixed meter with an underlying thematic purpose, the latter of which seems to be the case for Echo's theme. It's a banger level 1 example, but unfortunately, no matter how many times I use Echo's ult, I can't rewind all of the hours I've wasted playing League. I'm Perhaps the most requested tune for me to analyze is Marx's theme from Kirby Superstar. I've done a short harmonic analysis in my Kirby video from a while back, but I never did talk about the meter. Let's take a listen. Marx's theme, apart from being more unpredictable in its mixed meter, also features a wider variety of time signatures. The first five measures are in 3-4, interrupted by a slightly longer 4-4, and then back to 3-4 again. The tune is largely in 3-4, but with these intermittent interruptions for a measure or two, giving the tune this demented, skipping waltz type feel. But Marx's theme isn't just here because it's unpredictable. Something you may have noticed already is that some of the time signatures could be simplified. For instance, the 6-4 measure in the third line could be just two measures of 3-4, maintaining the otherwise 3-4 groove. Similarly, line 4 with its alternating measures of 3-4 and 2-4 could just be simplified as two measures of 5-4. But the reason for my visually counterintuitive notation has to do with phrase length. Almost all music with a groove is able to be felt in phrases, or musical sentences. In the Western idiom, the most intuitive kind of phrase length is groups of four measures, or other powers of two. This is so ubiquitous that if I scroll to a random Kirby game, sure, Kirby's Pinball Land, you'll find that the theme is indeed grouped into clear four-bar phrases. This is a classic question-answer kind of form in the A section, where we can hear this first phrase as the question and the next as the answer, so to speak, both of which taking up exactly four measures each. Apart from the melody, we can also see how the harmony repeats and supports the beginning of each phrase in the same way. The phrase lengths are definitely very apparent in this tune, but I would argue the same principles apply to Marx's theme even despite the mixed meter. The first four measures cleanly form the intro. The next four measures form the next complete thought, even with this 4-4 measure that slightly breaks up the groove. But this next phrase is where it gets kind of interesting. It starts exactly the same as the previous phrase, but if we split that 6-4 measure into two 3-4s, we have a 5-bar phrase. But let's compare that 6-4 measure to the 4-4 measure in the same place one line above. It's exactly the same, but it just repeats the first two beats of the measure. It's for both this reason and the cultural strength of the 4-bar phrase, I would argue this really does feel like a bar of 6-4. And this logic extends throughout the entire tune, which I would argue is comprised of only four bar phrases, albeit with wacky mixed meters. It's admittedly something I didn't consider when I first transcribed this tune however many years ago for the Kirby video. It's actually a great example of how sometimes what's more intuitive on sheet music is directly at odds with what's more intuitive to the ear, the latter of which of course always has to take precedence. I won't bore you guys with my anti-sheet music agenda, but I think this actually has even more importance to the tune than is immediately apparent. Comparing the intentionality of mixed meter in this tune versus Echo's theme, I think while the latter was deliberate, here it really feels intuitive as if composers Jun Ishikawa and Dan Miyakawa came up with this wonky, killer clown-like melody in their heads without thinking about meter. And the hardware they worked on supported that approach. Whereas modern DAWs and notation softwares very clearly lock you into time signatures and grids, the music trackers of old didn't necessarily have that, and it was just indiscriminate scrolling frames that forced the music programmer to keep track of bar lines themselves. This tune is a really cool example of mixed meter that is simultaneously a bit hard to follow, but held together by this lyrical melody and consistent four-bar phrases. So cool. But anywho, the intent of mixed meter usage will be even more relevant in the later examples, as well as phrase length. While this tune and Echo's theme largely adhere to four-bar phrases, this won't be the case for most of the following examples. I am glad I got to talk about Marx's theme again, though. The Marx fandom is dying. Comment if you're a real Marxist. Another tune that often comes up in the discussion of wacky time signatures, the infamous Doom Dragon from Golden Sun The Lost Age. Let's take a listen to a little snippet.
so this tune is all over the place rhythmically. We have this combination of larger time signatures like 4, 6, 5, and 7, the latter two being asymmetrical prime numbers. Most of the contiguous measures of any one time signature are in this rushing 5-8 kind of feel. And speaking of which, those 5-8 measures are the only instances of stable 4-bar phrases. After the intro, we have this measure of 6-8, then measure of 7-8, giving us this short 2-bar phrase. Then our 4-bar phrase in 5-8, and then this awkward 6-8 into 4-4 for a kind of 2-bar phrase again. And on the repeat, there's an extra measure of 4-4, so now it's this awkward 3-bar phrase. This same kind of wackiness continues throughout the entire tune, and though the meter sometimes stabilizes on 3 or 5 later, the phrase lengths are always kind of weird, which then affects our perception of the meter. It doesn't really feel like an intentional gimmick, but rather the same kind of fast, difficult to count groove changes seen in metal or prog rock. It is of course naturally very fitting as the final boss theme for Golden Sun, as the meter changes provide so much energy and keep you on your toes for the entirety of the fight. The mixed meter honestly feels so idiomatic to this kind of sound that I'm running out of things to say that don't feel entirely obvious. I was considering omitting this tune from the video entirely, but that would be as bad as Doom Dragon using Jin Storm into Cruel Ruono. This tune is a sleeper pick from Minecraft Dungeons, which I don't actually own, so I'm just playing regular Minecraft. But anyways, let's take a listen to Tempest Golem. What I love about this tune is how clean it looks in notation. The bass line is that simple repeating figure, as is the melody. Every phrase has the same number of measures, but every component is designed to be as unnerving and alarming as possible. Though the melody strongly plays on the downbeat of each measure, the number of beats per measure switches unpredictably between these higher numbers, like 9, 10, and 11. There's no discernible rhyme or reason to the pattern of these time signatures either. Whereas the previous tune's meters either guided or were guided by the melody, there's nothing to really go off of here to predict or remember the time signatures. And the consistent phrase lengths strangely make this even harder to keep track of, because they're consistently 5 bar phrases. It's interesting because the only thing giving this tune any structure and semblance of phrase length is the harmony, which consists of these 5 chords which loop every 5 measures. That being said, it's hard to even call these five measures phrases to begin with, as five bar phrases are already generally counterintuitive, and these specific phrases are further obfuscated by the inconsistent meter changes. And that's still not everything, because on top of all of this, the drum part is playing a polymeter, which, if you recall from my Every Time Signatures video, is when two separate metric feels overlap, typically with one on a different cycle than the other. The right symbol is just playing quarter notes through the entire thing, which creates this interesting polymeter. Since the quarter notes land on every odd eighth note, it flips to sounding like offbeats after this first 11-8 measure. Let's listen to the semi-isolated drum part. effect of having an element that stays rhythmically consistent, which contrasts with all other elements in the tunes switching the groove every measure. It's just such a nice departure from the previous tunes in how the mixed meter is composed. The rhythmic composition seems very deliberately constructed, with this three five-bar phrases framework that later sections in the tune also superimpose themselves over. It's a theme for a boss battle just like Doom Dragon, but despite its stuttery time sigs, its construction is so appropriately blocky. Super cool. This tune is probably one of the most famous mixed meter video game tunes of recent years. Frothy Waters from Splatoon 3 Salmon Run mode. Let's take a listen.
honestly so funny. Looking at the sheet music, it's fairly obvious that this entire first section is just a repeating two-bar loop, starting at just 2-8 but increasing all the way up to 17-8, which frustratingly doesn't quite fit on the first page, but nonetheless super funny. It's also our first tune to really sound entirely artificially constructed in its mixed meter usage. Ryo Nagamatsu almost certainly thought of the idea of increasing every other measure by one eighth note before implementing it, rather than hearing the idea as an intuitive result of the melody or drums. It's probably one of the few mixed meter tunes out there which can have its time signatures be reliably expressed with simple linear growth, which is kind of hilarious. And this usage is quite apparent to the listener, which is fascinating for a mixed meter tune in which the time signature changes every measure. This is definitely facilitated by the catchy, jovial little cello melody, which helps ground the listener every time the loop repeats. I suppose it's technically a series of two-bar phrases, with each phrase getting progressively longer and more distorted in the harmony and instrumentation. What's also cool is that the time signatures themselves on the increasing measures are really just pure notation. They're not indicative of the typical rhythmic groove of those time signatures. The sheet music is just a literal expression of the amount of time those grating, repeating eighth notes take up. It just all feels so stupid and meta-ironic. The mixed meter in this context is used without a doubt because the in-game performers are unhinged. We've already looked at one of their tunes in the Every Time Sigs video, which makes perfect sense considering their style can best be described as Time Sig Brain Rock Horror. Some of you were upset that I was too mean to these salmonoids in the last video, so I'm happy to announce that we've since buried the hatchet. And here we are on the final example of this video and my personal favorite, Gilded Runner from Genshin Impact. Let's take a listen to the first part. Definitely much different compared to the previous examples. The time signature changes are subtler and driven by the combination of this meandering melody and rhythmic hits underneath. Each melodic phrase increases in length until the loop after this 21-8 measure. Some of you math dorks may have already noticed, but these time signature changes aren't random. It's the Fibonacci sequence. Essentially, every measure is the length of the sum of the previous two measures. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, so on and so forth. It's such an uncommon way of composing in general, using a mathematical formula as the basis for time signature changes. But what I love about this is how organic it sounds. If you're listening to this in-game or even just for fun, the melody doesn't really provide much rhythmic information and it's hard to discern the true nature of the mixed meter. It just sounds like these through-composed loops that grow faster near the end of the loop. It's hard to hear any phrase length as the sentence of sorts sounds like one long idea without any clear, easily recognizable divisions until the loop. But the Fibonacci sequence mixed meter is still easy to hear as long as you listen for the hits underneath and count the eighth notes. It's just such a brilliant tune that combines this artificially constructed element with a melody that just feels so organic. Composer Yu Peng Chen has gone on record confirming that this was in fact a deliberate choice to use the Fibonacci sequence. After all, the track name Gilded Runner is almost certainly a reference to the related Golden Ratio. I think this specific usage of mixed meter has further meaning apart from just being a skippy little battle theme. This is the battle theme in the region of Sumeru, which is based on Middle Eastern and South Asian cultures. This type of sound is easily heard in the scales used in the melody, which resemble scales heard in the real-life counterparts. But anyways, Yu Peng Chen almost certainly decided to use the Fibonacci sequence here as this similarly unplaceable facsimile, an homage to the rich cultural history of cool rhythmic cycles in these regions. I've seen some people have even drawn parallels between Gilded Runner and the famous Fibonacci Konakol by B.C. Manjunat, the latter of which also uses the Fibonacci sequence in the context of South Indian music. It is certainly possible that Yu Peng Chen drew inspiration from this, which would be super cool. But either way, an amazing tune. And those are just some of the coolest examples of mixed meter I could find. As with every music theory concept, there are many, many other contexts in which mixed meter can appear. And I implore you guys to comment with your favorite examples. Okay, not this one though. I would be remiss to not mention the one gigantic usage of mixed meter that I couldn't find any examples of in video games, that being maintaining synchronicity to picture. 
Almost every single film score you've ever heard has mixed meter, since the music typically has to break a consistent groove in order to adhere to the cuts. I'll probably talk about this at some point in greater detail, but for now, my film scoring degree will continue to rot in my closet. My doll, don't leave me here! <laughs> my... <laughs>